Today's little video takes us deep down south and we're in the little tiny hamlet of Selsey. Um, you might recognise something just over there, I'll show you a picture in a minute. That's a memorial stone to the Selsey tramway. And we're down here to see one gentleman's recreation of a signal box. And our colleague Will has been helping him build that signal box and wire it up and everything. So we're here to see some of his collection and also to see his recreation of a signal box. Uh, so this is the uh, Peyton North block shelf uh, for Robert Ryan. Um, he, for those of you who aren't aware, is uh, doing a simulated version of Peyton North uh, to the Open Signal Box Simulator System. Temporarily, we're using a manual panel uh, to work all the bells, blocks, and indicators. Uh, when the sim gets installed, the computer will work to everything on the block shelf. Uh, it's been wired. I'm not an S&T lineman from BR, so this is all home learnt things, uh, but it's all wired and it should all be working correctly. So here we've got the block and the bell for uh, Gasworks sidings. Uh, we've got the block uh, and the bell for the down, uh, the reversible uh, line on the up and down uh, to paint the south. And we've got the uh, down line non pegger to um, paint the north, uh, paint the south uh, on the down line. Uh, so here we've got our simple panel. Uh, we've got the toggle switches which work the bells. Uh, and we've got the toggle switches which work the track circuits. And the universal indicator for the signal. So you've got on, wrong and off. And the same with the block indicators. Um, if you want to peg a line clear, you have to press down the button. Get a line clear. Turn that's normal. And train on line. For the non pegging block on the up line, uh, we've got line clear. And train on line. Uh, Spagnolite C, that doesn't have the same technical features as a 1947 block. So, to change the electrical connections, we use uh, elongated bell tappers. These are specially designed for spangolesses. And they, when they're depressed, push up against a spring, which uh, rotates a, a contact bar uh, into the relevant uh, position. So if we want to give a line clear, we press down the white key. And if we let go of that, that will spring straight back up. So in order to hold that in place, we push the bar across. And now we've got a line clear. That is repeated in the next signal box. We also have reminder devices on both the Spagnoletti and the 1947 block, which lock the commutator in the relevant position. And on the Spagnoletti, it prevents you from pressing down the tapper, um, but in this case, we've already pressed down ours. If we want to go to uh, if we get to an entering section, we would pay to train online. And even if we depress down the line clear key, the contacts in the instrument would automatically destroy the line clear indication and peg it to train online. If we lower the reminder flap, uh, that would prevent you from, even if the bar is released, releasing the tapper and it would keep it a train online and the same with the 1947 that prevents the contact from being moved. Um, we've got the bell to sound box on the down line and we've got the non paying uh, indicator as well. So if we were to signal a train uh, going from Gaswick siding straight uh, through on the down line, we get call attention on the how bell. Uh, we would respond and then we'd probably get a code like stopping train. That will be repeated in the next signal box in rear. 
when we get to any intersection, we will then offer it forward. We give us a line clear and then we clear our signals. When the train passes uh, our signal box, or is just about to enter the next section ahead, we would bell train entry section. And the signalman there would throw his commutator to train online or depress his train online key if it's a spangletty. And we would give out a section to the signal box in rear. And on the western uh, train out section, it isn't repeated and you don't need to have called attention before it either. So that's the box. Of course, if this was a real train, the track circuits would, of course, move along with the train. So, yeah. Lovely. Fair amount of work gone into it. Uh, fair amount. Um, How many hours? Uh, I'd say about 10 hours. About 10 hours work on that. And the next stage is the lever frame and the diagram, which you're, you're yep. drawing the diagram up as we speak. Yep. Um, it's not going to be illuminated because we've obviously got the track circuit indicators. Yeah. Um, we will also be providing uh, Dominic with some photographs of the uh, contacts inside A47 Spangletti so you can visually see uh, those uh, when we depress the tappers. If we were going to uh, signal a train on the bi-directional line coming again from Gasworks sidings going to South Box, we get call attention. section yep. this track isn't and uh, we bring our now bring single locks and that uh, he can only do uh, when he reverses his interlocking lever because it's bi-directional which is the same as directional lever on the uh, Eastern region, and then when the track circuit gets illuminated, we send uh, train entry section. And then when it's finally in the platform, send out a section for the train. Seeing what's in there, and then eventually when the uh, Train that trundles down the line, track circuit for clear, and we would get train out section. Uh, I'll send you some photographs of this uh, without the cover on later. Uh, you've got 230 volts coming in, uh, you've got a positive 6 volt, a 0 volt return, and a negative 6 volt um, back to the supply. Uh, everything's fused, both on the 230 side and on the 6 volt and 12 volt side. And we're here we've got a 12 volt adjustable uh, power supply uh, with fine adjustment uh, for um, the voltage if it's needed. A lot of work going into that. As I say, the control box and these cables are only temporary until we get the simulator board um, done. Uh, the relays here next to the 6 volt uh, supply, uh, they're just 12 volt relays, um, standard show relays. Yeah. Uh, because the Great Western, if I was to peg a uh, line clear, that is now sending negative 12 volts through the contacts out to line, and a positive is, tra is a train on line indication, unlike the other regions which is positive as a line clear and negative is trained on line. The simulator system can't handle that because all the inputs need to be positive. So we need to send the commutator uh, inputs to a relay and then that will send the information to the simulator. We also have a lamp out unit. And at the moment the lamp is lit and the pyrometer is happy. That's uh, made a contact. If the pyrometer was to go out, or the, if the pyrometer was to cool down because the flame had gone out, would ring and uh, it would be very loud it would annoy the signalman so uh, the signalman would switch the 
it indicates a bell-off position. Uh, the indicator and circuit still works, it's still showing that the lamp is out, uh, however we just silence the bell. Uh, when the lamp would be lit, um, we get that indication, but no bell ring, unlike mm -hmm. on the LM system. Yeah. It's the signal's responsibility to put it back to normal, put it back to normal and then test the system. This uh, test tab, uh, which we have shown before on a small snippet on the IRC, uh, this simulates the breaking of the pyrometer circuit. Uh, there is uh, two sides, two circuits to these units. One is the indicator circuit, and the other is, uh, which activates also the relay, and the other is the bell circuit, which flows through the relay uh, and out uh, to the bell. That's on the back of it, isn't That's it? On That's on the back of it. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you very much. All right. So uh, we've had a brief look at these on the IRSE minor railway section um, previously on the Facebook page. So the front is the indicator unit and what happens is the pyrometer circuit uh, comes in from the battery and the signal through the pyrometer back through here. It goes into the line contact. It will then flow through this switch which is a test circuit uh, switch, and it will then throw, flow through the coil. It will then th flow through the coils of the relay, and it will then go back out to the pyrometer. In the event of that circuit failing, uh, because this is a uh, normally closed fail-safe system, um, the flag will automatically go to lamp out, and it's weighted to that position, so even if the power fails, which we can demonstrate now, yeah, a few seconds later it drops off. A few seconds later it will start dropping off. It's a bit sticky that one, there you go. Um, in the signal box the bell would be on a separate battery. Hmm. So if that happened the bell would ring. It would carry me in. Yep. Uh, in this case the bell is all on the same system. Um, and so obviously when the power fails or the pyrometer lamp goes out. And we can, if you have a look at the relay here. So this is in its um, standard configuration. So at the moment it's making an electrical contact um, against this side, but not uh, this side with the exposed screw. Uh, our bell is connected to this side here. Yeah. So as soon as the power is taken off, the spring will pull the armature back because uh, the pivot's here and that will spring forward and make the contact. So it's a fairly simple system. It's very delicate. Um, so you've got to be careful uh, when you are adjusting the uh, springs and the contacts in the back. But uh, as with most things, uh, as long as you take due care and attention, it will be fine.